Welcome back. In Alan Milburn's resignation letter, he praised the Education Secretary's commitment to the cause of social mobility, but continued, it has become obvious that the government as a whole is unable to commit to the same level of support. The Secretary of State for Education is, of course, Justine Greening, who joins me now from Westminster. Very good morning to you, Ms Greening. Morning, how are you? Very, very well indeed. Uh, I'm wondering about you, though. I mean, you've made social mobility your top priority. Today, your Social Mobility Commission resigned en masse, saying there is little hope of this government making progress. There are ringing endorsements, aren't there? And then there's Alan Milburn. Well, I'm sorry that um, Alan's uh, taken the action he's taken. His term had come to an end, actually. So uh, we just want to make sure we get some fresh talent into the Social Mobility Commission. But... I agree with him how important this area is. It's a huge passion for me within the Department for Education to really drive social mobility, to drive equality of opportunity. What I don't agree with Alan on is the fact that we are doing a huge amount across government. So whether it's in my own department where we're seeing school standards getting better. Last week we heard that 1.9 million more children are in better primary and secondary schools now than in 2010, whether it's looking at the technical education reforms that we're bringing through and T-levels, really mobilising business to give more opportunities to young people on their doorsteps. There's a massive amount going on across government. You look at the budget um, the week before last on housing, stamp duty cut for first-time buyers. Actually, we're doing a lot to make sure that young people can get on the right track and then make the most of their potential. Sure, but there's a but, long but, way to go. And this sure, isn't sure. a country where we have equality of opportunity, but we're setting about making sure that over time we put that in place for the first time. Sure. So, so, so you weren't then personally pushing for Alan Milburn's um, term as uh, chairman to be extended? Well, I'm not going to get into the discussions I mean, that, that, I have that sounds like a yes. Yeah, that sounds I'm, like a yes to me. Well, Alan's term had come to an end. So I think um, what's important to me is we get some fresh blood in. But I think I'm also saying that I don't agree that we're not taking significant steps across government because we absolutely are. And we're seeing the fruit of that effort already bearing results. So if you look at the attainment gap, in other words, the difference between how well more disadvantaged children do compared to their better starting peers, actually that's closing now in schools. So we're moving in the right direction. But as Alan sets out today, quite rightly, there's a very long way to go. And we need to really make sure that the fruits of these reforms are being felt in the communities where we need to see change happen the most. A, a long way to go is putting it one way. I mean, Mr. Wilburn said this, it's under, the government is understandably <coughs> focused on Brexit. It does not seem to have the necessary bandwidth to ensure that the rhetoric of healing social division is matched with the reality. I mean, Theresa May made that speech on the doorstep of number 10 in which she put social mobility at, at the centre of her government. I'm told that you had that framed and mounted in the, on the walls of your office. I mean, is that hanging slightly crooked today? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I agree with Alan that we've got a long, long way to go. But you look at the announcement we're making today on mental health, tackling one of the main barriers, actually, that often holds back young people from doing their best and, and reaching their potential. More uh, investment to really support mental health provision, both inside but also alongside schools, more training for, for schools in terms of being able to take preventative action to help young people if they have the beginning of a mental health challenge. But set it in the broader context. I think we are moving in the right direction. There's a lot of work going on. Look at the opportunity areas work where the Department of Education is on the ground working inside schools to improve standards, but also with communities and businesses to raise aspirations and, and set sites high. There's a huge amount of work going on. It is a generational challenge. There's no doubt about this. I don't think any of us should accept a country where you have a different shot at being successful purely because of where you're growing up or your background. We don't fix that overnight, but I think we're Indeed. moving in the right direction. Indeed. I mean, as you say, a, a, a generational challenge. I mean, we should say, of course, the Conservatives have been in power since 2010. And, uh, and frankly, much of what has been said today could have been said you know, back in 2010 about, uh, about the social mobility. However, I mean, the, the reason that Mr Milburn gives, and he says it's understandable, is that there is a focus in government uh, on Brexit. With Conservatives now minority, with people under the age of 45, I mean, do you think the Tories have got a a fundamental problem with selling the PM's take on Brexit to the public? Well, I think she's about to go to Brussels for an important negotiation later, later this month. But actually, for me, I think Brexit is an enabler to how we make sure that there's opportunity everywhere for young people. I think it really is focusing minds not only within government on why we need to 
make sure that we're unlocking the potential of every single person in our country, but also business. We held a skills summit in the Department for Education only last Thursday about how we can make sure that business is really partnering with government to offer the opportunities that young people want on our doorsteps. And if we're going to plug the skills gap that we've got, that we've had for many, many years in this country, it will take not just the reforms to policy on introducing T levels and apprenticeships, but also businesses coming with us on that journey to really be part of the solution for young people. And, and I think we have got some way to go, but I really do feel the building blocks are there now. We'll only achieve this equality of opportunity that I want to see in our country if people can work together and focus on that common aim. Uh, someone who also has uh, a distance to go, if he wants to get here, that is, is the US President Donald Trump. Should he be afforded a state visit with all the trappings, given what, what he has done this week, which is, in essence, amplifying the views and public profile of a far-right fascist organisation? Well, I think everybody said... Uh, by and large, that President Trump was wrong to retweet. Uh, but but the should tweets. he should he have a state visit? Well, I I think we need to see it in the context actually of the broader relationship our two countries have, America and the United Kingdom. He can there's visit without he can visit without meeting the Queen. Is my point. Well, there's a real. I was going to say there's a real longevity to it. I, I think presidents come and go, and we should focus on the the broader picture of that important relationship. The, the fact that America is one of our greatest allies, but we should also reflect on the fact that um, whatever you may think, anyone's personal view of President Trump, he's the elected um, head of the American, uh, of, of the US. So I think it's important that we maintain a relationship with America, with the United States. Um, we don't agree with the, the tweets that he did over the past several days, and we've made that very clear. Um, yeah, so, I mean, some behaviour can, can be categorised as, as wrong. I mean, included within that, one presumes, is viewing pornography at work. I don't think that's acceptable. I don't think most employers would think it's acceptable. And, of course, there are clear laws around the nature of uh, viewing pornography more generally. Um, but in terms of, of, of Damien Green, actually, let, 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 let's stick with the hypothetical because we know Mr Green's position in all of this. I mean, what would be the internal procedure at your department if a member of your staff was, was found accessing pornography? Well, there are clear rules for all employers, including the public services. So those would uh, kick into action as they would with any uh, question around employee disciplinary procedures. I mean, the, the question now is whether or not um, your cabinet colleague has lied, isn't it? I mean, his, his close ally, Crispin Blunt, made, made the same point on Friday. I mean, if he is proved to have lied about any of this now, I mean, this is actually entirely, in fact, separate to the issue of watching pornography at work. If he is proved to lie, he has to go, doesn't he? Well, there's a Cabinet Office review into all of this underway. I don't think it's either helpful or particularly um, sensible of me to, to preempt what that will come out with. So there's there's, a I'm not asking you to preempt, I'm just saying if he's lied, he has out, to resign. As Mr Green has been clear about um, his stance on this, and, and he's made that clear in the past, and I'm sure um, Damien will, will continue to be, to be firm in, in what he said. Justin Greening, lovely to see you. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you.